Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 1 of a best of 5 between Prester John and Pixie in the 3rd place final in Season 3 of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Slutsk East and both players have decided to play on the Allied side. On our left in the red team we have Pixie using Gruppe Weiburg and the flatline deployment type. And on our right in the blue team we have Prester John using the second infantry Indian head and the balanced deployment type. So Pixie and Prester John unfortunately both lost their semi-finals so they are down in this third place final but still all to play for I believe I think there was a prize for third place so it's a best of five You've got a lot of games it could still be very very competitive now Pixie bringing out Gruppe Weiborg very strong well not necessarily a strong 1v1 division but a versatile 1v1 division it does have decent infantry although not that much of it throughout the game then there is decent tanks in the form of the IS-2s and it also has the sort of support weapons uh, to back it up as well. It has like a decent amount of AT guns and also uh, I think some infantry guns if you if you want to bring them. On the side of Presta John uh, we see the second infantry and the second infantry uh, very well known for their abundance of good value infantry um, being an infantry division that's what you'd expect. But they do have the basics, and they are units with M1 Garands. They are cheap. They are really, really good at putting out decent DPS at a medium range. Also, with the 2nd Infantry, you do have some pretty fantastic artillery. You've got like the Xylophone to pin units before making a charge, much like the Gachusha, but you get two salvos. Then there's also the 60mm mortars as well, which if micro properly, especially in an infantry-on-infantry -infantry scenario, could certainly turn the tide either way. There's also units like the Ranger Marauders, which will be fantastic for taking out the heavy tanks of Pixie should he choose to use them at close range. Let's have a look at some of the units going down. So on the left hand side here for Pixie, he has certainly deployed a lot of Chernos to start. Got eight Chernos here, Stamoviki squad, two Ognemachiki, BTRS, two gv one s Gamrotti, SU-76P, and on the top side there, Oknemachiki and PTRS. It's nice to see him sort of deploying them like this initially. It allows me to see uh, very well what he has. Uh, two more SU-76Ps there with the Chernos. These are really cool. Uh, they're basically, I think it's a, T, it's a T26 hull. And it has a infantry gun mounted on top. Pretty cool. Can do a lot of damage to infantry at medium range because of the two machine guns as well. On the bottom side, two flamers, three flamers, four flamers. Uh, Going to be a ZIS-3 in there, PTRS squad, and another SU-76P. Uh, P. So interesting to see the reliance on these armoured infantry guns. I'm curious how that's going to work out for him. He's got one flamer squad on the bottom side, which will most likely try and uh, just hold some ground here. Maybe like faint defence on the edge of this town, I would suspect. Over on the right side for Presta John, uh, we see basics, talks about those, Ranger Marauders also in there, three flamethrowers, that's going to be four Ranger Marauders on this road, Engineer Leader, four units of basics further back, that make that five in total, Rifles early and a Commander there, which is going to be giving them the extra veterancy. Are there any leaders in here? No, so might be using this Commander at close range to give two-star veterancy to his units. And then the M4A1 in there and the M1 gun on the top side. The M1 gun will probably try and snipe the road as best it can. And he's got four flamers heading probably for the edge of this town. And then a basics following that up. And on the bottom side, he's got two more light infantry. He's got the flamethrower and range of marauders, two flamethrowers, basics, and an M1 gun. So M1 gun just to Hold this bottom side. Some flamers to push for the center area here and also cover this town. I feel like Pixie is certainly going to be able to take the advantage in the center of the map, but 
Pixie might struggle on the top side with the Chernos versus the infantry of the second. That's going to be something to pay attention to for sure. Now these FU-76Ps, they're not particularly fast off-road, so surprising to see Pixie try and move him up there because it's going to take a while to actually be effective, but I was curious what the Pixie was going to do with these and how they would work for him. Looks like he's just going to use them like normal OBs, but from like cover. So the PTRS is getting into position. Flamethrower though has already unloaded. Does have the Thompson submachine gun, which is pretty useful for the engagements at close range. But the big mistake here is the flamethrower is in the building. Now, I think the flamethrower jumped out just before the flame hit, so it didn't take as much damage. Uh, maybe not. I thought Presser John was microing that, but I don't think so in the end. Down there we do see a jeep going down, so one thing did die before it unloaded. Uh, we did also see the unit of infantry going down here as well. Right, M4A1 moving up towards this top side. Basics going to kill off the PTRS. Doesn't look like uh, Pixie got lucky with any of the PTRS strikes. Pressure John did deploy quite far back on the very top side though. That's something to pay attention to. Uh, this 3 going to be getting some shots into the flamethrowers in the center. Looks like both players are relatively happy with their positioning so far. We're still 12 to 12. Pressure John's trying to get this Flamer squad from Pixie does manage to do so. PTRS. Can it kill off the Flamer? To be really good for Presser John if he can take out the PTRS. He does not. Now we'll lose the flag temporarily until these basics get into position. So now basics up against Chernos. Does have the commander back here to provide the two star veterancy to those, which is vitally important for this engagement because. Pixie's Chernos also have two-star veterancy thanks to the KV-1S and the commander further behind. The thing is with Pixie though is he's also got Chernos on the top side with two-star veterancy so might be able to push through and put pressure on the very top side of the map against Presto John early on. So KV-1S versus M4A1 who is going to come out on top. This is certainly an important engagement that both players are going to want to manage. Chernos are pushing in to unload towards this town. The two basics should be able to take care of one unit of Chernos quite easily. More reinforcements coming in for Pixie on the bottom side. Looks like he's just uh, using those cheap infantry to solidify his defences on that bottom side of the map. More infantry for Presser John coming in on the top side. Now so for a one has done a lot of chipping damage to these men. He's killed off like a few men from each squad. And what that's going to do is allow Presta John, if he brings in fresh squads, to get really good trades. Because if you have a squad that's only got, say, 8 men, and you go up against a squad that has 12, uh, the one squad with 12 will have a significant advantage. The M1 gun, now moving into position on the front of the side, that should stop any aggressive transports down there and even cover the center potentially. Although this building does make it hard to hit this road. More rifles anyway coming in onto the top side. Ranger Marauders are still sat in position. There is an M1 gun in the tree line that has been spotted by the Razvidka. That was lucky. That wasn't luck at all. Pixie decided to bring recon and it paid off. M1 gun goes down, his KV-1S is safe for now. He's brought in another KV-1S to follow up. He's also got a Churchill on the way. The Churchill for the Lend-Lease Soviet Churchill. KV-1S uh, is going to support the topside push. So he's got two KV-1Ss pushing with all of this infantry on both the top and further down. The flamethrower squad will be able to do some damage but will likely get taken out quite easily. The rifles early not going to be too effective at close range because they rely so heavily on their M1 Garands and BAR. The Chernos do have a submachine gun whilst the rifles do not so if they get into range with it the Chernos could do a lot of damage. There is an M21 now on the field that's putting down some smoke that's going to allow the basics to get past there. I don't think it was actually needed in the end though. Rifles engaging Rajutka. 
And a Stoky DP. Here comes a Hurricane. Lovely bombing strike from the Hurricane. Takes out an infantry squad. Forces the other one to fall back. And now he can also strafe with this. He's got 420 mils. So Pixie is going to be putting on an air show unless Presta John decides to respond. I think Presta John's best bet is like Thunderbolts or P-38s, I think. So not the best quality aircraft for dealing with stuff in the early game. I think a Hurricane front on would probably shoot down a P-38. But the Ranger Marauders are in range of the Storaki DP. will land their Willy Pete grenades. I will chunk the Storaki DP there very quickly, but those Ranger Marauders going down, very valuable units to take care of because it allows Pixie so much more freedom with his tanks should those be dead. And the M4A1 has had to back off. Rifles early are coming in to reinforce now. You've got those 12 man squads coming up against weakened Straki DP and Radvidka. He might be able to start chewing things up here, like chewing up these squads and then push back, but he's got to find a way to deal with this armor. Currently causing him a little bit of a problem. Basics versus Chernos. The Basics should be able to win that due to the advantage in men. However, Chernos do have the submachine guns, so you never quite know how those engagements are going to turn out. A little bit of luck when it comes to the submachine gun and the Chernos could very much end up with the man advantage and then things go badly for the basics. But the basics, as long as they keep the man advantage, should win and it looks like that's what's happening so far. M21 going to be engaging the Chernos. That smoke, I believe it's just to cover reinforcements from the uh, KV-1S. It's going to have to put smoke further over if he wants to avoid any more trucks like this going down. Hurricane's still flying around. Uh, actually, I think that was a new Hurricane. It, actually, no, I think that's probably the same one. Maybe strafe this unit so the Cherno actually won that engagement when they shouldn't have. Cherno's pushing into the open ground as well. Almost managed to dislodge the flamethrowers into line of sight of the SU-76P and the ZIS-3. If that flamethrower goes down, that could be a potential flag capture for Pixie, which would be really nice. It's currently 14 to 10. 15 to 9 is a double tick, so I think Presta John... Is, is in trouble here. He hasn't got much good infantry value so far. And the flamethrower is now pinned down. The Chernos are still wailing on them. The building that they were hidden in got destroyed. So the last man gets killed. And yeah, that's the flag almost in the hands of Pixie there. Yeah, the build-up of combined forces here with like the, the leadership as well in this his, his tanks... It's been really nice and the Churchill is going to do a great job of picking off M4A1s and other armoured vehicles at range because it has really high rate of fire and decent penetration. So if that Churchill can get into a good position we might see things happen. Ranger Marauders still sneaking about. I think two of them have already been killed. Presta John's going to try and use this one to take out the KV-1S but there is still the Resvitica nearby so it's going to get spotted almost instantly. KV-1S does go down. That does remove veterancy. Now could be the time for Presta John to clean up a lot of these infantry squads. Stomaviki have moved into position on this bottom side, but they are engaging basics at range, which is not good for a squad that relies on seven submachine guns. However, not really going to matter. 17 to 7 currently on the map. Presta John's infantry forces on the top side in the town here are falling apart very fast, and that's already ceded the flag to Pixie. As the Stroki DP move into position. This 3 also taking shots at the M1 gun. Might find the kill there. Which would be really really nice for Pixie. And it seems as though every time Presta John's bringing in a new unit. It's just dying without really responding much. And that's causing big build ups on the side of Pixie. That he's just not able to break down. And now he's forced to engage the KV-1S at range. With the M4A1 and... The KV-1S has the advantage, no doubt. It has the 100 mils of penetration. It has the extra 5 millimeters of frontal armor. And that does make all the difference in the percentages at these max range engagements, but also at closer ranges. So the M4A1's really not working too well for Presser John right now. And his AT gun dying on the top side there isn't good. Bringing in M1 guns to try and get rid of these KV-1Ss at close range. 
because the ranger marauders just couldn't do the job. And they've managed to kill one so far, and that's about it. I'm back to 14 to 10, not completely over yet. A lot of Pixie's weakened infantry squads here have now been cut down due to the loss of veterancy. So that was vital there in that engagement. Basics managed to take out the Chernos on the hill. So that helped out as well. And the Basics cleaned up the Shnemoviki. So uh, some aggression from Pixie being stopped for the time being. But still 15 to 9. Still going to be a minor defeat for Prester John in 10 minutes if you can't get a hand on this game. Two more Shnemoviki coming in for the push here. Onto the basics at close range. If they, if he can micro those at the hundred meter range, basics don't stand a chance. So that's what he's got to do to win that engagement. On the bottom side, he's actually bringing in Stomaviki rocks. And now Stomaviki rocks, eight man squads, two flamethrowers, lovely close range infantry. Really, really tough to deal with if they can get into position. So we'll see. M1 gun engaging the Churchill 4 at close range. Did manage to get into position. Churchill 4 goes down. Another Chur or another KV-1S goes down on the top side as well. Another piece of armor. I believe the M1 gun sorted that out. So it looks like Presta John's starting to make a little bit of progress here in cutting down Pixie's pushes. Now it's starting to regain control, at least on the hill, if not elsewhere. So yeah, Stomaviki. Uh, one of them died before I unloaded, I presume. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Pixie here could have made a lot more ground if he was paying more attention. This three finally goes down on the ridge as well, so that's nicely done. Also the M1 gun, so... It looks like Prester John went into like full AT mode, realized that the tank supporting the infantry was the main problem that he had to deal with because his M4A1s weren't quite doing the job. And now he's dealt with that armor, he managed to break down some of the infantry, and that's given him ground back. However, this infantry on the top side was just not challenged at all, so it's all quite healthy still. Getting infantry to attack into that top side town now that he's lost a foothold is going to be very difficult. And even more so now, with an IS-2 creeping on top of this hill. Even AT guns are going to struggle to deal with that. Rest of John will have to RT it to death or bomb it to death, or maybe get lucky with a bazooka. And the 152mm off map is also getting in position, and this could be absolutely gorgeous. M1 gun on the top side did take out the KV-1S, so there's no more armor support for the Chernos and the Soroki other than the IS-2 on the hill. The IS-2 has really slow reload time, so you technically, you could, technically you could force a lot of infantry into this engagement and not have too much cover there. Although the SU-76 actually, with the 3 star veterancy, that will do the job. And did do the job already. On to the M1 gun. Now there is six units of rifles early inside that off map. There's also the M16. And M16 was the only thing that stopped the Hurricanes from landing the bombing strike. So if that dies to this off map, it's going to be a crushing blow to Prester John's defense. Ranger LMGs uh, coming in on the bottom side now. Fantastic mid to long range engagement tools but they're going to have to find line of sight onto the Termoviki and that's going to be difficult unless the Termoviki I guess open up with their machine gun which they could very well do because Pixie hasn't turned it off on the bottom side Termoviki have managed to get into position because they are in half tracks the basics can't stop them from moving forwards the range of marauders would have to be in position to do so and I'm not entirely sure that Prester John is paying attention to this bottom side of the map just yet he does have two M4A1s on the way to help him take back this flag, but it's a serious investment of units just to take this back. The off map looks like it did a decent chunk of damage, but mostly just pinned. I took out a few men here and there from these infantry squads. This strike, however, might do the rest. This is going to be seriously good. That could kill the MGMC, it could kill the M4. Let's see what it gets. There is also the commander there that it might hit. It has landed one near the commander. M16 goes down as well. Off map lands perfectly on the rifles, causes one to surrender. Commander goes down. That off map was almost perfect. If the M4 dies as well, it will be. Not quite, I don't think. Close. Very close. 
the KV-1S might just finish the job, and if it does... Oh, it missed! Then, yeah, Pixie's in a fantastic position to push back. Astomaviki here. Clean out the basics, clean out the flamethrower. Ranger Marauder. Looks like it took out one of the Stomaviki before they unloaded. Uh, but trouble is, Ranger Marauder is just a recon unit, so it's not holding the front line there. 15 to 9 still. And the KV-1S finishes off the Sherman. Things are looking terrible for Presta John. That was a crucial off map. It was so good. Perfectly placed. Hit the mark very well. Nicely done. Now Presta John looks like he's going to try and make a push across the open on the bottom side to try and take back some flags since he probably realises that he's in trouble on this top side. Uh, I believe Pixie will still have one more off map strike available. So the fact that Preston John's reinforcing this heavily uh, might cause him to burn out of even more forces if the off map hits right. Uh, two M4s here. They're currently engaged in the Strauki. T-34 is currently sitting behind cover. Same deal on the bottom side. I don't think those T-34s want to engage the M4s unless it's out of range where they can reliably penetrate. Ranger Marauders actually managed to get through the Stomaviki. Wow. Nicely done by them. Yeah, here we go. P-51 or P-47, sorry, coming in with a bombing strike onto this hill is quite nice. Going to pin down all of those infantry. Might allow these rifles early to get some surrenders. But here comes the off map very, very shortly. That has the potential to kill off the leader again. Maybe the range of marauders. It might be a little far to the right. I think the range of marauders are ahead of themselves. These range of marauders are going to be doing some more damage to the Staraki there as well. I mean, all of the sizable infantry squads are getting pinned right now. So there's no reinforcements for these rangers. This ranger unit's been discovered. This one's in the open, going to go down. Presser John's trying to make some decent push on the bottom side. If he can take out the Cherno, he can use the ranger marauders to clean out the T-34 and maybe push double flag on the bottom side. He needs a unit that can capture the flag in the open. But he's got an IS-2-1943 facing him down here. And the Zis-3 could also open up as well if it wants to. The one of the M4s goes down there to the IS-2. M21 is going to smoke up the bazooka onto the high ground so that he can maybe hit some of these T-34s. But it just doesn't look like Presta John really got a good start in this game. And it's just haunted him for the rest of it. And he does, of course, have a balanced deployment type. So as we move into Phase C, he'll have... A greater advantage over Pixie, but will he have time to use the point advantage in the balanced deployment type? We'll have to wait and see. Hurricane coming in for the bombing strike and strafing run onto the M4A1. Hurricane bombs the M4, trades for the T34. The Hurricane, nicely done. What that does is basically prevent the M4 from moving forwards and Killing off reinforcing units at range. But might not stop the rifles from unloading into good positions here. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. M1 gun being hit by the Zis-3 currently. Zis-3 has got two more shots. Can it make it work? It's got to hit both of them to get the kill. And one of them has got to do two damage. Last shot. M1 gun survives. Okay, rifles unloading in front of Strauki. The rifles early. They should have the DPS to defeat the Strauki, but the Strauki are currently in cover, whilst the rifles are not. So, Presta John going to have to hurry to get his units into cover, otherwise it's not going to end well for him. Uh, more infantry arriving for this engagement. It's going to be Ranger LMG. With the rifles early there. One of them went down before they unloaded. That's not good news. And this M4A1 is falling back and it doesn't really have anywhere to go. Oh, lovely kill there from the IS-2. Max range snipes of the 
M4 on the top. Two minutes and 26 seconds left. As we move into phase C, I'm really wondering, like, Presto Johnny probably has an abundance of infantry remaining. He brought in an aircraft to bomb, I presume, these Strauki. Managed to get away from the hurricane, which was good. And now he's got two, three tanks to deal with. Avtos are on their way. Avtos are pretty much the phase C unit for Vyborg. Now if Pixie starts losing momentum now, that could spell defeat. But Prester John's basically going to stop Pixie from getting the double tick. So that he has four minutes to spare. But there is another off map here. Yeah, there is a second off map. That's just going to take the wind out of Prester John's sails, that's for sure. Because all that off map needs to do is clip some of this infantry, and then he ends up surrendering like three very good squads. It didn't, in the end, it mostly hit on the right hand side. So, unlucky in this sense for Pixie. Does manage to kill an M4A1 with that, though. His previous off-maps are pretty on point, so can't really complain. So, nicely just driving through there. Doesn't even have to care about the bazooka. It's pinned down. Avto is doing plenty of damage. M4A1 engaging the T-34. Looks like he's just trying to reverse that out of position. Yeah, all of the infantry there is just going to get killed in the open on the bottom side. Nice try by Prester John. Very difficult to attack these objectives further back because your opponent's spawn is so close. They have ample time to, res to, to respond. Sorry. So two more bazookas on the way. More off map coming down. B-47's going for the rocket strike onto the IS-2. Doesn't quite hit the mark. And it hasn't been told to evac just yet either, so 37 is going to do quite a lot of damage to it. And what that means is he's not going to have it available uh, for quite a while now. Because it's going to take that extra time to repair. Now the bazookas did come in, one of them survived. It's pushing up now to get the shot onto the KV-1S. Bazookas can get really good value, they're only 20 points if they hit a tank. 50 points, you know, pay themselves off twice over, so nearly did the job, but was already pinned quite a bit, so lost its accuracy and caused it to miss the shot all oh, these rifles are going to continue to put pressure up there looks like Presser John's going to continue to push on the bottom side, but he hasn't found a way to reliably get rid of this IS-2 and therefore, now the 37 mils in position, it's going to be tough for him to do so. Especially in 1 minute and 30 seconds. Pixie's just got to stop Presser John from taking one more flag. For this minute and 30 seconds. And he'll take the first game in this best of 5. And the thing is, he doesn't even have to necessarily stop Presser John. He could just attack still. Still play it aggressive, go for this flag. Put all his troops on it when he needs to. Drive the IS-2 on it, for example, and that's it. I just don't think Presto John's got enough time to get this back to 12 to 12. He just had it r really rough from the start, and I think it just came down to his initial infantry, um, his initial initial infantry engagements, but also his tactics. The lack of infantry into this top side of town really, really cost him. A lot of positioning uh, throughout the game and made it very difficult for him to attack the town without having to rely on smoke from his mortar to cover the reinforcement road. The M4A1 there going down to the two T-34s and the Churchill. P-47 coming in for another rocket strike. This time around gets the kill. Now the Rhino needs to just rush onto this objective and just get the 12 to 12 hold the ground he might just be able to make it work but no I think it's too late because with the IS-2 is dead and now like pixie reliant on avtos and limited infantry availability there was definitely a way back in there but unfortunately I think Preston John just lost a little bit too much ground early on and his initial deployment 
wasn't very good in my opinion. I think he definitely missed out focusing on that topside town. It's vitally important in this uh, map. In the end, the kills to losses really showed the 2,615 kills to 1,745 losses. I think before that IST went down, before the end of the game there, that was pretty much a 2-1 to one KD for Pixie for most of the game. He did really, really well in those engagements. And Viborg, it really doesn't have much staying power. So after the 20 minutes, when you're onto that Avto card, that's when you're done. And Pixie was very close. So even though he was 2-1 to one for most of the early game, I think it shows why Viborg's not particularly strong right now. But lovely use of the off map. That really, really helped him win that battle. And yeah, also bringing in the Sturmaviki. Lacked Micro on the Sturmaviki on the bottom side. Nice use of the KV-1Ss though to support his infantry on the top side. And I think both players were very much focused on the top for most of the game until kind of Pixie kicked the Hornet's Nest on the bottom side and then Preston John kind of counterattacked majorly with his M4s. So yeah, interesting game. Actually much closer uh, than it seems when you look at the time and the kill to loss. There's an extra few minutes and that game completely turns around. Uh, but either way, that's it. That's game one of the best of five between Pixie and Presta John. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.